I'm Ed Barber and this is my guide to playing through the ABRSM Grade 3 Double Bass Scales. A few of my pupils have mentioned that it might be easier to have all of the scales in one place with the fingerings outlined, uh, so this is what I'm going to do in the video. I'll also finish the video with some practice tips of how to be efficient in learning the scales, but also how to play them in a more enjoyable manner and have, to have fun with the scales. Um, if you look in the description below, I'll outline where the majors, minors, chromatics and my practice tips are, so you can just uh, skip to the point in the video that's useful for you. I should also say that there's no definitive right or wrong way to play any of these scales. These are just the fingerings that have worked for me and that have worked for my pupils over the years of teaching. So, starting with A major. A major's got three sharps in the key signature, uh, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. So starting in first position, um, 0, 1, 4 on the A string, 0, 1, 4 on the D string, and then popping back to half position, G sharp and A, 1, 2 on the G string, A major. Three, the scales need to be slurred in pairs, so flat slurred in pairs. And for the arpeggio A, C sharp, E, A, you can just stay in first position for that. Zero, four on the A string, one on the D string, one on the G string. Great, so moving on to E major. E major's got four sharps in the key signature, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. Um, but for this, you can use exactly the same fingering, exactly the same shifts as A major, just start it on the E string. So 0, 1, 4 on the E string, 0, 1, 4 on the A string, and then 1, 2, back into half position on the D string for the G sharp to E. I'm playing all of these scales as even notes, as even quavers, and you can also hear that I'm hopefully trying to get louder as I move up the scale, and then quieter as I come back down the scale, just giving the scale some shape. So this is E major. And then the arpeggio, again, exactly the same as the A major arpeggio, just down a string. So open E, four fingers for the G sharp, B, one finger on the A string, and E, one finger on the D string. Zero, four, one, one. E major arpeggio. I'll slur this in pairs. So that's A major and E major, using the same fingering and the same positions. So next is C major. C major hasn't got anything in the key signature. Um, so you can play this in half or you can play it in first. Um, I prefer to start in first position. So C with two fingers on the A string. Two, naught, one, two, naught, one. And then shifting to second position for the B to C, two, four in second position. Two, four. For C major, um, the only real shift that needs practicing is the open G, A, and then moving second finger to fourth finger, B to C. So it's just worth doing that a few times just to really cement that shift. And then for the arpeggio, C, E, G, C, you can use an open G, so two, one, uh, two on the A string, one on the D string, open G, and then pop to second for the C. I actually like to encourage people to use a stopped G for this, so moving to second position earlier and playing the G with four fingers on the D string, so it sounds like this. It's just a nicer sound for the G, and it also gets used to that fingering of two, one, and then a semitone shift, four, four, uh, which can work for all arpeggios. So that's C major arpeggio, um, C, E, G, C. And then the last of the major scales, D major. So D major's got two sharps in C, uh, key signature, F sharp and C sharp. Um, so starting in first position, as, as we did with the A major and E major, 0, 1, 4 on the D string, 0, 1, 4 on the G string. And this time pop up to third position, C sharp with two fingers and D with four fingers. So 0, 1, 2, uh, 0, 1, 4, sorry, 0, 1, 4, 2, 4 in third, D major. Major. Um, and then the arpeggio, 
D, F sharp, A, D, start in first position, north, thing, uh, north open D, and then F sharp uh, with four fingers, one for the A on the G string, and then four up in third position for the D. So it's zero, four, one, and then pop up to third uh, for the D, and then back. So D major arpeggio. In a similar way to C major, uh, with the D major scale and arpeggio, just practicing that shift from first to third is really useful. So getting an A, which you can tune with your open A, and then finding that shift up to third, and then tuning third position the D with your open D. So that's all of the major scales covered. Moving on to minor scales, I like to play harmonic minor scales. Um, I like the way they sound, um, and I think for the um, lower grades, it's, it's nice to have a scale that's the same going up and going down. For grade three, you can play either harmonic or melodic, but um, for this video, I'm gonna just use harmonic minor scales. Um, harmonic minor scales is um, exactly what's in the key signature plus a raised seventh. So for D minor, the key signature is one flat, which is B flat, um, but we're all gonna, also gonna have the C sharp, um, which is the raised seventh. So for D minor, it's quite simple. We can use exactly the same positions as D major, first position moving to third, but rather than playing four fingers on the D and G string, we can play two. So the fingering for D minor that I'd use, uh, D uh, minor harmonic is uh, naught one, two on the D string, naught one, two on the G string, and then two, four on, uh, up in third position. So that's D, uh, D harmonic minor. And then the minor arpeggio, again, exactly the same uh, positions as D major, first to third, just instead of using the fourth finger for the F sharp, uh, two fingers for an F natural on the D string. So D, F natural, A, D for D minor harmonic. Right, so that's D minor um, arpeggio and scale. Great, so the next harmonic minor scale we're gonna play is G minor. Uh, so the key signature for G minor harmonic is B flats and E flat, um, and it also has the raised seventh, which is the F sharp. Uh, so we're going to start this one in half position, four, naught, one, four, naught, one. That's four on the E string, naught, one, four on the A string, naught, one on the D string, and then we need an F sharp. So you can pop to first position and play F sharp with four fingers, and then an open G. Um, I quite like to avoid the string crossing to play the open G if possible. So I'd rather play um, naught one in half position for the D to E flat, then go down to second position and play F sharp to G, two, four in second position. So the fingering I use is starting on the E string, four, naught, one, four, naught, one, two, four in second. And so it sounds like this. practice something it's quite nice to practice the uh, shift from half position to second position and you can check your four fingers with your open G so that's G minor but for the arpeggio um, totally cool to just stay in half position four for the G one for the B flat and then open D and open G it's quite useful to practice bowing all four strings G minor harmonic. Um, and then the last of the um, harmonic minor scales is E minor. So E minor just has F sharp in the key signature, uh, but you also have the raised seventh, which is D sharp. Um, a lot of my pupils try and play this, or prefer to play this scale, naught one, two, naught one, two in first position, and then going back to half position, one, two, for the D sharp to E. Um, I'm trying to encourage pupils to, to play this all in half position, to get used to playing in half position. Um, so naught two, four, naught two, four in half position, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C in half, and then D sharp to E uh, in half position. So this is E minor. And then the arpeggio, again, to get used to playing in half position, I prefer pupils to stay in half position and play the arpeggio, which is open E, four fingers for the G, two for the B, and then two for the top E.
So that's the E minor arpeggio. So that's the majors and the minor scales and arpeggios finished. So the last scale is the A chromatic scale. So a chromatic scale is just every note um, played between, between uh, two notes an octave apart. So uh, in this example, we're going to play a chromatic scale starting on A. Because we're using every note semitones apart, we need to shift from, first, uh, from half to first or first to half quite frequently. Um, so the general consensus is it's best to shift up on the first finger when going up a scale. So 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4 on the A string and D string. And then for the G, G sharp A, just stay in half position, 0, 1, 2. Um, so 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, um, and then 0, 1, 2. And then on the way back down, 2, 1, 0 in half, and then shifting back 4 to 4. So first with four fingers, and then back to half, 4, 2, 1, 0. First, four fingers for the C sharp, and then 4, 2, 1, 0 um, in half. Uh, so that's the chromatic scale. You'll notice that in the chromatic scale, I've written it out in 9, 8 uh, time signature because I find it easier to phrase chromatic scales in sets of three. Um, it, it helps me keep an awareness of where in the scale I am because there are no different intervals, um, so it's quite easy to get lost um, in chromatic scales, especially when you're playing them over multiple octaves. Um, so to phrase the chromatic scales in sets of three will help. Um, so I'll demonstrate um, chromatic scales starting on A. Um, so yeah, phrasing in sets of three, moving up the scale on the first finger, and then coming back down the scale, moving back four to four. So that's the majors, minors, and the chromatic scale covered. So now for some practice tips. Um, the first practice tip is, uh, if you're looking to learn, you know, work out intonation, then just practice the parts of the scale um, that need isolating, or isolate the, uh, the parts of the scale where there are going to be shifts to practice them. So, D major, um, we talked about this earlier, but just practicing the shift from first to third position, A, B, C sharp, D. <laughs> shifts and then you might practice the shift um, the top four notes of the C major scale G A B C to be secure with those so just isolating the shifts in the scale that need practicing the other way to practice scales is to just forget about right hand no bowing and um, not pizzicato or anything like that and just focus on the left hand so G minor for instance you might start in half and just focus on the hand shape and fingers just playing it through making sure the fingers are curved, nice spacing between first and second finger, and thumb bent at the back of the hand, keeping everything nice and relaxed. And so that's one method of practicing. Going on to apps, um, I find um, backing's really helpful for intonation and also staying in time. Um, an intonation backing that's really great is using a drone. Um, so uh, I can go to, like, go to YouTube, and then uh, just find a drone on a note that's going to be useful for you. So, I'm going to demonstrate the A major and A minor scales, but with a drone in the background. So going into YouTube, um, using a cello drone on A. So locking your ears into that drone and then pitching your notes against that note. available on every note, every semitone, so if you're practicing a set of scales it's quite useful to just uh, pick the drone that you need, practice the scale with that in the background. 
Uh, the other app that I use is the Smart Scales app. Um, so I've just gone into Smart Scales, I'll just show you kind of how to use it quickly. So pick a grade for double bass, grade three, scales, uh, major scales, and then for this one I'm just going to use D minor. Uh, the Smart Scales app provides three backing tracks for every set of major scales or minor scales. Um, I'm not a massive fan of playing along to backing tracks, just playing the scales straight through, but what I will use them for is improvising. Um, so you'll notice here I've taken out the lead, but I've left in the backing and the metronome. Backing to help with um, intonation and then the metronome to help with staying in time. Uh, the track that I'm using for this uh, to demonstrate is Tropicana Island, which is a kind of swung reggae feel. Um, and I'm just going to play up and down the D string, uh, up and down the D scale, sorry, and arpeggio. Pizzicato. Just playing up and down the scale. those you can isolate one or two notes again at a time to just play through those um, but I find those pretty useful for just really cementing the positions um, and the fingerings that you're using um, so yeah using the smart scales app is another one of the things that I'd use um, so that's the end of the video um, gone through the majors the minors the chromatic scale and then my practice tips um, I'd be interested in any feedback and um, so do feel free to leave a comment um, if there's other practice methods um, that other people use that are good for learning scales um, and there are also some jazz videos and jazz resources on my band Instagram page. My band is called Blues and Roots Ensemble, and the Insta page is Blues Roots Band. Roots is spelled R O O T S. Um, and also, there's, an Insta, uh, there's some resources on the band uh, website as well, which is uh, www.bluesandrootsensemble.com.